Hi, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen. I create art as I share the word of God. And today I'm going to be doing a beautiful piece inspired by the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22. Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. So I wanted to represent how a man getting a good wife he gets a good thing and he gets favor of the Lord that he is even able to find her. And also another thing I wanted to represent in this beautiful art piece is that a good woman from the Lord brings favor into the man's life as well because she is in the presence of the Lord. So she, God uses her to bless her, her family, her man and those around her. So that's why you will later see like she has this um, hair which is like a tree growing and the leaves will be falling down. I hope you stay tuned to see that later on. And so this is just representing the favor, the fruitfulness that is coming out of her because she herself is grounded in the Lord. And so those who are around her, especially her husband, get to experience that favor as well. And there was a person, who, I guess it was a pastor who once said, like when you give a woman a house, she will give you a home. If you give her a seed, she will give you a child. Like when you, everything you give a woman, she basically multiplies it and gives it back to you. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 is full of goodness of how that woman of the Lord is, what she does, how she holds herself. You can read it if you have some time later on. And it's just going to give you a better picture of understanding what a woman of God is. Another Proverbs I found is in the Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 and it reads, House and riches are the inheritors of fathers and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So like I mentioned before, if you want a prudent wife, if you want the wife that is going to bring honor into your life and favor into your life, she first has to be in the Lord and you yourself has to be in God as well because God will not give you his daughter to mess with her. He will not give you his daughter to break her heart. So you have to be the husband that God has called you to be in order to receive the wife that God has for you. You cannot be out here in the streets doing your thing and yet wondering why you're not getting a good wife. God will not trust you with that kind of a daughter. He cares about his children, just like he won't give a woman out there in the streets one of his sons because he doesn't want his children to be played with. He wants you to value what he's bringing into your life. So you have to become what God is calling you to be in order to receive what God has for you. In Titus chapter 2, specifically in the verses of verse 3 to 5, I'm just going to read it. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becomes holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So let's digest this a little bit. So here he's telling us the aged women likewise, like if they have a good behavior, that doesn't mean that every aged woman should be giving advice, but those women who are actually in the Lord, who have wisdom and have gotten this wisdom through years of marriage themselves, they're married, they have been good wives to their husbands, they have been good supporters to their community, they have been good mothers to their children because unfortunately not everyone who is older got the wisdom. These kind of women who have wisdom and are living according to the word of God, they are to teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children. Nothing good comes from being drunk. I'm not the one to tell you how to live your life. I'm just telling you what the word is saying. So to be sober. And I believe this is not just about drunkenness, but to actually have a clear and a sound mind. To have control over yourself. You should be discreet. A person who is guarded. You are not just sharing your business with anybody, venting about your husband and your children all day long to anybody who can listen. You are actually having control over your lips, not going around spreading rumors or gossiping. This is the kind of women that they are to become, to be keepers at home. And I know in this generation, it is not something that 
every woman wants or even wants to hear but this is what the bible is saying in the proverbs 31 we see that she has her own business she is respecting the community she has her own things doing different seasons so no matter what she's doing with other kind of businesses she has she is a keeper of home and it's hard to decide can she be a keeper of home and still do the other things that she's doing if she can find the balance as christians the husband is the head of the house and women, wives, we are the neck. We support him in everything that he does. The husband leads the home, the wife, the children, and the wives support his leadership. With a good support system, a man can go very far because he doesn't have to worry about the things which are behind him. That is why the wives are there to support him, to make sure that what is happening behind the scenes is taken care of. Keeping of the home means that you there is a peaceful atmosphere at home when the husband comes. She is not just complaining all the time, making him feel so uncomfortable that he's even dragging his feet to come back home, but creating this beautiful atmosphere at home that even the husband, when he's coming out of a full day of work where he's so tired, he's happy to come home. The children, when he's entering the door, the children are coming greeting him and they're happy to see him. The wife greets him, the smile with a beautiful hug or a kiss asking him how his day was and just making him feel supported and loved and welcomed. Loving your children means actually spending time with them, helping them teaching them as women we are to teach our children them teaching them how to pray teach the word of god how to help with the housework how to do the things of life getting to know them just taking the time in every season to make sure that you're there as a mother in proverbs chapter 31 verses 11 and 12 the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life so first of all we have to look at the fact that her husband trusts in her why because she is trustworthy she is faithful to him she will do him no harm she will do him good she does him good because she understands they are a team they work together when there is conflict they don't focus on one another who is to blame but she understands that they need to focus on the problem the problem is the problem the problem is not the person and sometimes yes we may be to be blamed but what does it help to blame one another this is why he can be in peace when he leaves the home and goes to do what God has called him to do, goes to work. He has a peace of mind and he's able to focus on the things that he is doing because at home there is trust, at home there is peace, at home there is gratitude. She is grateful for what he does. She is grateful for him and supports him. He actually feels like a king because he has this amazing woman and he knows that without this woman all this favor would not be upon him so we are not saying like what a woman is doing at home is so simple that you know all she does is smile we're just saying we have god teaches us to have this attitude where we respect our husbands and we see them and we are grateful for them and talking about respect Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. I believe the Bible talks a lot about the wife respecting the husband more than it talks about the wife loving her husband because men cherish respect. They are kings. They need to be respected. And if, as you can see here, God is telling them to love their wives as himself. In another chapter, it talks about love your wife as Christ loved the church. So we can see like the woman needs to be loved, but the man needs to be respected. No insults. Don't go insulting your husband. As a woman, you have to be very careful who you choose as your husband. Because you want to submit to him. You want to give him that respect. You want to do all these things for him. And not feel like it is an obligation. You want it to be something that is coming out of your nurturing spirit. To do these things for him. Because what you're doing is big. 
So make sure the one who you're giving it to is worthy of it. Otherwise, imagine having to submit yourself to someone who doesn't even care about you, who doesn't even love you enough to give you a commitment, who treats you like you're just any other girl and doesn't make you feel like a priority in his life. A good wife, a wife from the Lord prays over her husband long before he comes into her life. She prays for strength. She prays that he's a good leader. A woman of God is more precious than rubies. She's not out here looking. She knows that she is to be found. Even when we go back in Proverbs chapter 18, it talks about he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Finds. A man finds a wife. She knows her worth. She knows and understands how worthy she is in the eyes of God and that God will bring the right man at the right time. She prays about every man that tries to come into her life if that is the will of God because the enemy sends people in our life too. In the same way, men, pray about who is coming into your life. Has God sent them or has the enemy sent them? Maybe that's why some of us are still waiting because we need to get into a place where we actually value good men and good women. If you don't value a flower, even if someone gives you a flower, you won't even take care of it. You're just like, yeah, okay, try it up. But if you value that flower, you're going to take care of it, change the water, make sure you're trimming it for it to get enough moisture and to be hydrated all the time. You actually appreciate someone that you can trust, someone that you can rely on, someone that is constant, someone that is faithful, someone that is loyal, someone that is willing to not entertain the opposite sex just because they're there or just because they have options. If you cannot have control over your desires, your fleshly desires, how are you going to have control over your fleshly desires when things are tough? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I wish you a wonderful day, whatever time it is there. I love you. And always remember, time is life and life is Christ. See you next time. Bye-bye. shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters mm -hmm.